This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How are you going? Uh, I don't know. I can't see you right now because I got these goggles I, on my face. <laughs> yeah, I can't see either. Hang on a second. Okay, let's, 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 uh, oh, oh, hey, yeah. there you are. <laughs> So, yes, folks, this is the ah, very, 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 very long in waited overdue. overdue. There we go. Uh, VR episode. <laughs> super, super late adopter curmudgeon VR episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we're not exactly timely on, on everything, right? But, uh, hey, we're going right. to do that. We are going to be talking pinball in VR this entire episode Nothing else but just pinball in VR. Um, and we're going to kind of go through the gamut of uh, different hardware, different equipment, uh, different setups, um, just kind of everything. I mean, just so you obviously saw in the beginning, I'm here using a Oculus Rift. Okay. Jared, he's got the new Quest 2. This is the Quest Yes. Yeah, that's good. So, um, I mean, that right there is, you know, a slight difference <laughs> mm. in terms of, of about our How many years old? Like the... The Rift? Uh, yeah, the Rift is like a three-year-old device. Oh, uh, is it three or four? Longer. I think it's longer. Probably longer. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, I mean, obviously a lot has changed in the VR world since that. Um, this, I got this from a friend of mine. He was an early adopter of these, has been trying to get me into VR for some time. Um, and he has since put this on permanent loan. Well, not permanent, but you know what I mean. Long-term loan to me um, to mm. be able to use. Uh, Jared, on the other hand, just got his Quest 2. Mm, I sure did. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's new this year for me. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, you got it, what, right around before or after Christmas? Oh, just before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just, just got in before they all became unavailable, basically. Right. Because uh, they were... Everyone, literally, I think everyone that I've spoken to of my friends has got a Quest 2 oh, for wow. Christmas. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's... It, well, it's a price. Anyhow, we'll go into that. Yes, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why... Um, and my experiences with VR are... This isn't my first rodeo with it in terms of experiencing mm. it. Um, and we were kind of discussing this, just the various experiences that we've had through the very iterations. You know, we started off playing pinball in landscape mode. Um, yeah. Just like most of you. Uh, and I don't know about you, Jared. I was on a TV playing it. I wasn't on my computer screen yet. Yeah, um, I've always been on a, on a, on a PC screen. Um, okay. Yeah, never really on a on a TV screen because I I wasn't using console. Like, okay. well, actually, the first time I played pinball was actually on a mobile phone screen. <laughs> I was I was an avid mobile gamer, so I was playing on tablets basically, and the you know, like the Nvidia Shield tablet, which yeah. was by far the best um, of all the tablets. So yeah, with a controller, uh, yeah. So that was my first experience with uh, with pinball. Yeah, and I was on a I was using the PS3, um, playing Zen Two. And one of the cool things about that was that you could actually play Zen 2 in 3D because Sony, when the 3D craze hit, Sony all of a sudden put down the mandate, hey, any new game that's coming out needs to be 3D compatible. And that meant if you were pumping out DLC, your DLC had to be 3D. So Zen and uh, Pinball Arcade both did 3D applications. So this isn't the first time I've played these things in 3D. Um, mm. we're going to touch upon also the two differences just briefly on what those are in 3d, but beyond that, then we both went into playing on our PCs. Um, I had a chance to go up to Farsight, play the, uh, Arcuda cabinet that they had up there with the connect setup, which was doing the parallax 3d. So it wasn't, it wasn't a 3d image, but it was tracking your head. So the, the, the 2D images would shift as you shifted, mm. which was really quite cool. Um, yeah. Especially on certain tables, it was uh, night and day, uh, like a mm. like black hole with that <laughs> that play lower field. play field. It was you actually see into it, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. No, it yeah. was a huge difference in terms of your eye not bugging out of you know with what it was seeing. Um, 
to then us playing in cabinet mode on our PCs, you know, with the with the uh, the screens rotated, which we are thinking awesome. Um, yeah. To now doing VR, and I'm dying to compare what the VR experience is with playing on a virtual cabinet. Um, yeah, you know, that's the next step. That is like, the next step. It's the missing piece of the puzzle we don't quite have yet. Because what yeah. are we looking for? Ultimately, we're looking for that immersion. We know mm -hmm. it's not real pinball. What's the best way, what's the closest way we can get to feeling like you're playing real pinball? Real pinball, yeah. yeah. And this is a definitely a category where VR does a phenomenal job of getting it's you into it. Pretty good, yeah, y yeah. <laughs> it's it does a very good job. It uh, doesn't really break the illusion that much. No. So, like I said, I mentioned I had played these in 3D before, and so now having messed with the 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 headset. I did an A-B comparison. When we get into gameplay, that's when I'll be talking about that. But first, mm. let's talk about the hardware. So, like yeah. I said, I'm using a Rift. A Rift has to do the cable. You have to use the cable. Which breaks down into a USB 3.0 that you have to have on your computer. And yes. an HDMI, which you have to have on your computer. Now, like my computer here that I'm doing this... I have two monitors set up. One of my monitors uses HDMI. So if I wanted to plug this in, I would have to then disconnect that monitor, which is why I didn't have it. Oh, you lost your audio. I lost my audio. I oh, know you're back again now. Cool. Okay, that was weird. Um, yeah. And then on top of that, I have to have another USB 3.0 slot to plug in the sensor. And that's yep. not even if I want to bother doing the hand controls, because if I want the hand controls, I have to use another 3.0 USB slot to plug that sensor in. So I have to have two sensors set up in that case, plus the headset. I'm wired completely. It's rather annoying. Mm. Compare that to Jared. Who, well, yeah. that's all I need. Just <laughs> <laughs> that. Because it doesn't have the cameras on stands. It has the cameras all around the unit. So yeah. it's all built into the headset, very much like the Rift S. The Rift S has this as well. Um, so you don't have to put things up on the ceiling or put things on stands. You just put this on and away you go. And if you want to play PC VR games, you'd still have to have a cable. Although there is another way around doing that with a um, another app that you can install that... If you have a good Wi-Fi connection and um, you do a bit of setup, you can actually play PC games wirelessly stream through your local Wi-Fi network. Um, and it works well if you get it set up right. <laughs> if you get it set up right. That is one of the factors that has been annoying to me. Getting mm -hmm. it set up right. Mm -hmm. um, what Jared is dealing with is way easier than what I've been dealing with. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah. It it just getting this thing set up has been a battle uh, on multiple fronts. Like I said, when I first had it set up on my computer here in this office, uh, it was overriding audio and it wanted to override video, and I was losing my second monitor. And then plus I had all of a sudden limited space, and where can I put the sensors? Because you know I've got big monitors in front of me. Where mm. do you put the sensors? Oh, now you got to put them off to the side, which turns out. Some of the apps don't like that. Um, so mm. there was that. Uh, another thing that I want to just kind of get out of the way that um, is a little bit bothersome. The very first thing that happens when I put on the headset is it wanted me to do some calibration. And the very first thing that I was greeted with was something called God Rays. And God, God Rays, rays are these just three-dimensional emanating light <laughs> without resolution Christmas on the edges. That, I'm sorry, bugs me to no end. If I had a TV that was doing that, I would ditch the TV. I mean, yeah. that's just unwatchable. <laughs> I don't really have that problem on Oculus Quest 2. I, I don't... I have not really seen a time that I've seen that sort of after, uh, artifact happening, mm -hmm. at least to 
to an extent that I've gone, oh, that's a bit weird. But what I have noticed is that being in Australia, it's hot. Um, oh, if yeah. you get a bit of moisture inside the headset, yeah. you, you get like almost like a bloom. So it's not God rays, but it's like this like bloom around yeah. all of the text because it's just steamy inside the headset. Um, so there's a way of getting around that problem. So what I did is I got a um, an aftermarket, um, what they call this part here. It's called the facial interface and it comes off like that. Oh. Um, and this bit is what sort of goes inside the, the actual lenses here. And um, this one is by a company called VR Cover. And the, the thing that this thing does differently is that on the top here, it's got air vents. See how there's like little sort of gaps in the, the thing up there. So that lets air that's coming out of the, um, the Oculus, because it's actually got an Android. This thing's all Android based. So it's got basically an Android motherboard in there or phone running a, a Snapdragon XR2 chip. And it's also got a fan, of course. So the fan blows in air inside the, the headset and it will actually ventilate it more with that headset um, facial interface on because of the air vents in it. So I get way less fogging with that particular cover. But the stock one, I used to get fogged up all the time um, with it because it was hot. Mine just gets hot. <laughs> it, it, is, it is hot. Like wearing one of these things... Um, it's it's warm to actually to to wear them because there's like it's just a big hot box with a screen, yeah, pretty much right in front of your face, yeah, behind two lenses. So the experience, like just the physical experience of it, they're hot, and even that one, it's heavy. Um, I can't it, imagine because I, I mean, it's winter here for us. Although you know, it was eighty degrees the other day here in Southern California, so winter is a, it's a, a relative term. But I can't imagine playing this midsummer, uh, wearing the headset without air conditioning on or like a really good fan blowing yeah. on you. Yeah, it's it's pretty warm. Like though, I've got a game on there that's um, this is the only non bit of pinball um, that I'll, I'll talk about. It's a drumming game, and it's like Guitar Hero essentially, but okay. it's for drums. And after I've played that, like I played through about 10 songs, I'm just lathered in sweat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other reason why those VR covers are really good is that you can just wipe them off. Uh... But the, the stock one is like this porous foam. And you can imagine after like four or five months of summer, how manky that's going to get. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went out and got it. Last, it was 38 US dollars delivered. And I went, oh, yeah, shut up and take my money. I, I will need one of them. Yeah, and that that big thing on the back of mine. So Chris is. Uh, if you hold up yours, Chris, um, you'll see that Chris has got the little skull cap thing on the back of his. Um, but I had to buy that separately because the Oculus, because it's such a cheap device to buy, they've stripped back all of the premium accessories on it. So this thing here, I had to buy aftermarket, and it basically does the same thing as Chris's does. It supports the back of your head underneath the crown of your head there. And that's really important because it takes all of the front weight off the the headset um, and distributes it uh, around the back there. So you get like a really good um, balance. Of it the saves your neck, folks. Because otherwise your head is going to go, uh, and you're going to be, when you take the thing off, you're like, oh. <laughs> mm. If you've had it and on it's for It's really long. hard. Yeah. It's really hard when you're playing pinball because what are you doing when you're playing pinball? You're looking down. down. Yeah. And if you don't have the balance right, it you'll you end up with a sore neck. Yeah. Like, it's just how it is. Um, additional problem that I was having that, uh, again, this is nothing to do with the software that uh, you play. This has everything to do with the hardware. Um, VR is notorious for having a screen door effect. And yeah. if you mix in God Rays... And screen door effect, your text looks like that. On the left, quite blurry. And you feel like everything is constantly out of focus. Which, mm. what does that do? Gives you eye strain. Which, while wearing a headset, gives you a nice, lovely headache. So, um, yeah. Jared, would you say that yours is even better than the one on the right? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's heaps better. The okay. the screens they're using in the Quest 2 are like higher than 1080p. So... Okay, because like I was even reading a thing that they were talking about uh, there might be an upgrade coming 
uh, a, a firmware update coming to the Quest that it is moving the pixels fast in a manner that will blur the black lines basically that are in between each pixel so that your brain will see a much smoother, uh, uh, more crisp image. It's possible um, that they're going to do that. Yeah, I think there's a there's a really nerdy name for that, which escapes me, but it does sound... <laughs> It does sound familiar. the The other thing is is that more and more games will be supporting ninety hertz mode mm. on Quest Two, which I think most games are running around seventy two hertz, which is the default. Um, which is I think more than the Rift. I think the Rift was running at like sixty something okay. like that. Um, so yeah, running at ninety. I've seen some games running at ninety. It's crisp as anything. So yeah, more and more games over this year will be coming out with that built in. By default, that'll be the the baseline operating. More screen. screen door effects and uh, sorry, folks. These are images that I pulled off Google. <laughs> mm. I didn't capture anything. It, well, no, capturing wouldn't even. I mean, unless you used your own camera, you wouldn't capture the screen door effect um, by no. doing an image capture. But uh, that's me on the left. It's not. Again, you lose detail, a lot you of detail. Really do. And what is something that you need in pinball? Detail, detail with all the light, you know, all the inserts and the text that's on the play field and the, you know, just even the ball itself, you don't want to lose. So any reflections that would normally have been on the ball, I'm not seeing if that's just yeah. like gone. Um, Jared, you said yours is more in line with what's on the right there. Yeah, it is more in line with that. Um, you still, you, you still get just a little bit of screen dooring, but mm -hmm. it's so, it's like, it's to an extent where you really don't notice it that much. In other words, your brain and, pretty much compensates it. I mean, gets used to it rather quickly. Oh yeah, very quickly because yeah. it's so minimal that your brain can just auto correct it, right. and you don't you don't really see it at all. Like it, it doesn't bother me in the slightest mm -hmm. um, on the on the quest to uh, at all. Uh, I think when I'm looking at the the Oculus desktop version versus the native Oculus Quest um, sort of lobby area, yeah. I, I still see like it's not so much as screen drawing it's just lower resolution stuff mm -hmm. in in there but that's not screen drawing and that's that's the thing you need to be aware of with vr sometimes the the stuff you see in vr isn't like as a result as a result of screen drawing it's just a lower or chunkier resolution um that you're seeing and i'll just say spoiler alert Farsight doesn't do a good job with this. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. We'll get into that and, mm, and the reasons yeah. and how I know it for a fact. Um, okay, last uh, last bit of business to uh, show regarding hardware. Jared, show off how you control yours. Yeah, sure thing. So I've got two what they call Oculus Touch controllers. Now, these ones have got aftermarket straps on them, so I can just slide my hands in like that. Um, and then I'm in there like that. Um, so I've got the triggers on the top and on the sides, I've got like pins of triggers. What these tra these straps do is let me independently control them because otherwise I have to like hold it like that. Oh. And the tendency is to like want to grab it and see like for, for big handed dudes like me, these are pretty small grips, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've only got two fingers of grip on them. So having these knuckle straps like that allow me to just wave them around and not have any problems at all. Okay. Now on the on the top of them, you've got like two separate um, control. Oops, that one's a little bit uh, that one. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So you'll see that they've got basically A, B, X, Y, two thumbsticks, and an Oculus menu on the right, and uh, like a context menu on the left. So d depending on what game you've got, they work differently. But always the Oculus menu there will get you back to like a an overlay in the yep. game. It's almost like a pause menu, really. Mm -hmm. And these are all wireless. You don't need sensors for them. Um, they've got infrared um, tracking on them. So the, the headset can pick up the infrared signals from them and it knows where they are and no cameras or anything. Okay. Um, now, while I do have the Oculus Touch controls, I still haven't bothered to hook them up. Mm. There's a good reason for that. <laughs> because if I hook them up, it then wants to override, like, let's say, a 360 controller. Um, I don't want that overriding because I'm dealing with something else entirely, and that is 
my pin sim micro cab that I built. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm playing on, folks. Yeah. And so my joystick there uh, does do navigation. I've got the A, B, X, Y buttons uh, on there too. Um, you know, so those are what are what are here on the top. Obviously, I have here two sets of uh, flipper controls. So this is the front one is the one that I use. Um, and then this right here is a Y button. And you may be asking, why the third button? Well, you know how there's uh, wizard upgrades in Pinball yep. FX3? Well, I wanted to just be able to quickly hit that button and activate it rather than having to reach over to the top of the uh, of the unit there. And um, feel where it is. Because feel where it a, is. Because like, you know when, like, you know, stern cabinets with the big apron button you can whack, you know, yeah. that's really easy to find because you're looking at it. But when yeah. you've got your headset on, you, you don't really know where it is and you got to like get those wizard upgrades activated fast yeah usually so you need it right where you can get it so that's a really good a well and good sometimes you also have to hold the button in while mm. flipping <laughs> so if oh, you had yeah. to take one hand off then you'd be down a flipper button so i wanted it right there um easy to access really and it works there. really well so the wonderful, beautiful thing. My my controller is the standard height of a pinball machine. It's the same height as my 8-Ball Deluxe um, for for my hands resting, uh, which turns out I believe this is the same height as what the Arcade 1-Up Cab is. I'll be... When I get one of those, I'll be throwing this side by side and seeing. Um, That'll be a good comparison, yeah. Mine it's is really also... the first, first four inches of a pinball cabinet. Eight inches. Off, it's the first really. eight inches. Eight inches, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, it's the same width as a pinball cabinet, 22 inches wide mm -hmm. um, for a standard pinball cab. Um, you can see, obviously, I've got the uh, I've got the, the plunger and my launch button. These are my menu button, menu and pause button on the front. And being in VR and having a hard surface to put your hands on is amazing <laughs> because one of the problems that I have with VR is when I'm standing there, I start to lose balance sometimes and I, mm. and you lose complete track of what's in the room around you. And next thing you know, you're falling over the couch or stepping on something to be able to put my hand down on a hard surface and know that that's my home base. Um, really allowed me to be in VR much longer than I ever previously have. And plus when you're playing pinball, I'm used to standing and playing pinball. Jared, you actually sit in your chair a lot of times. Yeah, right? I do. So what I do, I'll roll back. What I do is have my two controllers in my hand and I'm just, I've set up my, my perimeter and I'll fade away when I'm doing this, but I'll just go like this basically. And I'm just playing here like this. Oh, okay. It's like, so it's, it's uh, comfortable for me to do that. Um, I don't have, what well, number one, I don't have a pin sim. Number two, yes. <laughs> I don't really have the... I mean, I could stand, but we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later in the show about the differences between you know play styles and how you play yeah. in VR. Yeah. I can definitely say, though, hopefully it'd be wonderful if Zen got together with Arcade 1UP and produced a cab of this nature um, as a peripheral. If I could get my hands on one of these that was... Twist, uh, quest to compatible, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have to like mess around with it. It would be very, very good, and I would get one very, very quickly <laughs> <laughs> because it is true. Like you, depending on the game you're playing, the way you interact with the the actual physical controller in the case of the pin sim. Um, really does complete the whole illusion. Like you really do feel like you're standing right in front of that digital machine playing yeah. it. Uh, it is quite, quite impressive. So, so if you're, if, if you guys are wondering how come the cab isn't right there, like it normally is, that's because it's in the other room with the VR setup. <laughs> um, I didn't feel yeah. like dragging it all the way back in here just to, you know, put it in here for a moment. Um, that's his new home for now. In, a, out there, yeah, out there, out there in the uh, in the big living room for me. Um, okay, so there's the hardware, right? Um, I'm dealing with old hardware. Jared's dealing with 
much, 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 much newer. The newest of hardware. Very From shiny. Oculus, yeah. at least. Um, Oculus, obviously, yeah. we don't have an H, you know, the Vive. We don't have the PSVR, um, th- any of these. We're not a VR show. We're not. No, we're not. We're really not. It's not and, what we review. Um, and I will tell you that if you want, like, uh, while we're talking about, you know, the the best places to to hear about VR, because we're the best place to hear about digital pinball, um, but the best place to hear about um, VR that I've found um, is a channel called the VR Oasis, and it's run by this guy called Mike. He's been doing VR ever since VR was a thing. Um, he's got a really, really great way of explaining things, both for seasoned players and for new players. He covers everything in the industry, all the games. Um, really, really good guy to check out. VR Oasis, Mike from VR Oasis. Really great. Check it out. There you go. Because you know what? We know what we don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And this is like, we are so shiny new into this that we, we have a lot to learn. Yes. And, um, but, you know, it's probably... I've got a feeling that what we experienced, so I think we could probably wrap it up like this, like at least frame it like this, is that based on what we've experienced that we're going to be telling you about during the course of the show, this won't be the first time or the last time that we're doing things in VR this year, I don't think. Yeah. Because it it is really good to play pinball in VR. And if you're kind of wondering why now, guys, I mean, other than Jared <laughs> just getting, in case you hadn't heard, um, Mel was being uh, interviewed on the Arcade One Up Weekly uh, show, and uh, John D was there. Mel mentioned that they've got some VR announcements coming soon. So me and Jared mm. were like, well, oh, okay. Then, I guess if, if, if Zen is getting back into the VR game, we probably should, you know be getting somewhat more knowledgeable about it too because you know digital pinball it's what we cover um that's right so what are we going to be talking about then specifically three games we are dealing with pinball fx2 vr not mm-hmm. pinball fx3 there is no pinball fx3 vr pinball fx2 There's... vr zacharia vr and stern pinball arcade vr okay those are the three um biggies uh, you know, go figure. <laughs> For the main players yeah. out there in, in pinball land. Right. Yeah. Um, we are not, again, stepping into the VPX world. I'm sorry. It would literally be like if we were doing an animation show that focused on, you know, Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks and Blue Sky. And then you guys went, well, but what about anime? Yeah. That's a whole nother beast entirely that you don't just go, yeah, I've seen Akira. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very different beast. Um, we've explained why yeah. um, in the past. It's, it's tricky to get set up. Um, and it's, well, it's, it's a hobbyist version. Of, right. Of so, yes, we are aware that VR exists there, but... Mm. Let, we'll let somebody else deal with that. We're dealing with the commercial mm. side of of, uh, of pinball. So, yep. like I said, those three programs. Um, two of those programs, Stern and Zen, are native to the Oculus Store. Yes. Zacharia is uh, Steam. So yes, you're going to be right. dealing with Steam VR and Oculus VR. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, a, a jarring experience dancing between those two also. Um, mm. At least for me, there was. Uh, because the pro while the programs will talk to each other, they're not set up the same way at all. So that's kind of the different thing. Um, so let's dive right in. Right, mm. first thing when you throw on that headset, when you load up the the program, what are you greeted with? You're greeted with basically the user interface of the uh, of the program. So yep. I wanted to show what the various user interfaces look like to you guys. Mm. Let's start off here with Zen. So you got a, a screen there. It gives you the intro. You've got three pinball machines in this ginormous room. The machines are at a far distance. You load in, boom, table is in front of you. And away you go. Okay, so... There is Zen's. It's a very open UI. It's very simplistic. You're not... um, It feels like it's definitely made for VR. 
Uh, if yep. you want to change the tables that are within that room, you look at the big TV screen, you go into it, and what are you presented with? Basically, the FX2 menu of tables. Mm. Um, it's not columns or anything else like that that you're used to with FX3. It's just the, here's everything that we have. Um, which is, how many tables is that? What, like 16 or so? I can't remember how many. Or 12. Something like that. It's 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 not even all of the Zen originals that are no, in there. Like not even like close. Tesla, Tesla and stuff like that are not in there. Shaman, those ones aren't in there. It's probably probably for good reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, they're, it's they're, a limited collection. Age. It's a very limited Although, collection. Having saying that, I actually think those tables really need VR because they are very hard to understand. Yes. Um, in in two D, and that's another thing that you know, we'll talk about yes. during the course of the show as well. So there's, that's the Zen experience. Now mm. let me present you with the Zacharia experience. Okay. Imagine that you are, I'm just going to pause this for a moment here. Imagine that you're in one of those true IMAX theaters where it's you a wall drink. it's a wall of seats and you've got a six story tall screen in front of you that's what this is like and you sitting in the front row like it is right there in your face and as Jared is the one that uh, captured the video here as you'll see you have to look around in order to see everything I'm literally going like this yeah. with my head to actually get this vision it is that that apparent what you have to do. It is really hard to see everything in view. And there's no way you can back it up. Nope. Like you basically like you look down, you're on this stage, and and this screen is like you're standing straight there, like Chris is saying. It is really, really close. It's it is definitely uh, a bit jarring and um a bit headache inducing. <laughs> almost yeah, immediately it, where you're it, just like oh good lord look at that um the, the one thing it is though is it's really crisp like be, even though it's really close to you like that mm -hmm. the resolution is really really good and like on the quest 2 hardware i don't get any any like pixel issues or anything like that it's like you're just looking like you it's like you've zoomed in but you're losing no fidelity at all like it's it is crisp so that's something. So basically what Zachary has done here is they haven't done anything special for VR. They literally took their menus that you're used to when playing on Steam, because I don't know what it looks like on Switch or on, on, on any of the other systems, and mm. just made it a VR version. That's all they've yeah. done. It's not just they didn't added, create a special environment or anything. They just added the two lenses. Yeah. Like they've switched, on, switched it on basically and said, right. oh, here it is. Because it is... You know, it's an add-on. Yeah. 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 Um, let's take a look at what Stern's looks like. Hmm. Let me... All right. So Stern's, you were presented with this, basically, a lounge. The weird thing is you're standing up on a staircase, looking down into this pit, and so it feels like you're floating too high, <laughs> which is yeah. a little bit odd um, of a sensation. But the room does feel spacious. You don't feel like anything is thrown in front of your face, um, at least immediately. And then let me... Uh... The environment looks, like in Stern, the environment looks really, really nice. Like the the area that you're in, in their, their game lobby, it's like, it surprised me. Mm -hmm. When I first loaded, I thought, okay, this is going to be... I, I was remembering the mobile app and what that looked like. And I'm going, oh, this is going to be mm, a little bit average. Yeah. But... No, I got in there and went, oh, I wasn't expecting this. It looks, it looks really good. So I mean, it definitely helps having spatial, you know, a, a space to be in uh, you yes. know, with, the, with some distance and room in there so that you're not feeling like it's just an immediate slap in the face to your eyeballs. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me come back here. Hold on. This video is dancing all over the place as I get in here. So there's the... UI, basically the menu that then pops up for you to make your selections uh, with. Um, not the most intuitive. Go figure. 
from Farsight. <laughs> no. Because yeah, who would have thought? There is all sorts of stuff going on here. You know, you've got one of the things. It's a free app. Yeah, it is. Um, you can. It's freemium, you know, free to play. Yes, free to play system. Yeah. Um, so that being said, you're dealing with a token system. You're dealing with a store. You're dealing with table of the day. You know, this free goals of the day that are free. Uh, table select where things are locked, but you can still play them if you spend some of your tokens. And I mean, it just kind of becomes kind of a muddled experience. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that I don't like about it either, <laughs> but the room looks good. But the, the other thing I don't like either is that Considering this is a an experience built for Oculus um, on Oculus Desktop, they when to select a menu for ages, I was going okay. I'm point you the way you do things in VR generally is you point at a menu and you select it with the trigger. And I was pointing at it. I was going trigger. Why isn't this working? Mm. Turns out that you've got to actually point and then use A to select the menu. Well, this and that is doesn't sound like a big thing. It doesn't sound like a big thing. It is. But it's just like, it's it's not the pattern that Oculus want you to use when you're developing an app. Like they want you to select things with a trigger because the whole idea with Oculus is your hand is your interface and like using a button breaks the feeling. Of well, and, and as I'll talk about a little bit later, um, the Farsight for some reason likes to program their controllers different than everybody and make mm. them function differently. Which is like, yeah, come on. It's special. It's yeah. special. Um, all right, let's move on. So that is, okay. like I said, that's the the first thing you're greeted with. That's the UI. Um, that's the lobby experience the in lobby. the game. Yeah, there you go. The lobby. Um, so let's get into the menu uh, more or less. I don't think mm -hmm. I have the menu for, uh, for Zen because literally you just start playing. If you yeah. want the menu, you push select. Up pops a thing, and then you can start going into your options if you want to go a little bit farther. It winds up basically yeah. being exactly like what the FX2 experience is on that front um, mm. with getting into your options. But for the most part, Zen just goes, oh, you're here? Let's play. Let's play. You don't, you don't <laughs> need to set up anything. Everything no. is just laid out ready just, for you to it go. It just goes. So like I said, um, let's see what I have here uh, next on my video. Ah, yes. The Zachariah right. experience. I'm going to pause so this, this is real me, quick. <laughs> this is me battling with the, with the Zachariah experience. Yeah. So <laughs> you get this floating menu in front mm. of you. Now, Jared was... His experience is different than my experience because mine, that menu is locked, and wherever you move your head, that menu is. And mm. the problem is, because it's so close to your face... Things up in the corners, you can't see. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm moving my eyeballs, trying to see it. The only way I could literally get a clear vision was to tilt my head back, because then my eyeball drops, and then I was able to see. Guess what's up in that corner, folks? The play the button. Ex <laughs> <laughs> so this is me, right? This is, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of what that video looks like when I'm actually doing it. This is me. So this controller, sh it controls the menu, right? So... Yeah. This is, this is the thing that you can position your menu anywhere that this controller is. And then here's me going like, oh. <laughs> and, and like I'm trying to line up the laser pointer to the menu. I'm going, uh, uh. it's like I'm trying to shoot an arrow. Like <laughs> it really is the strangest experience to use it. Like, See, fortunately for me with using my controller, um, it was just joystick flicks. So again, it yeah. was just like using, because... Uh, my pin sim controller essentially is a 360 controller. That's what the pin sim board replicates is mm. what would happen on a 360 controller. So I was navigating just like I'm used to navigating within. Yeah. But it was just a matter of seeing what box I'm trying to highlight to, you know, to get it into the place. Whereas Jared's was yeah. more of a VR -y experience. All right, let's keep on yeah. watching and see the, uh, the wonky. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going into the, the VR menu here and I'm trying to select my play position. Oh, Whoops. look at that clipping. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I, I kind of went a little bit too low there, so I'm going to try and... like. And oh, again, no, now he's in the ceiling fan. 
I'm going. I'm having to like literally go up like this to try and get the little laser who is actually hitting the cabinet and stopping at the cabinet <laughs> that I'm clipping through. I have to go above the cabinet so I can get the the the, <laughs> the laser to go into the menu. So it's, now it's no bueno. I want you guys to oh. remember this particular view of the cabinet. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to get to the reason why I want you to remember that in a little bit, but just keep that view in mind being way above the cab um all right let's keep on uh, rolling this see if there's more so here i am going oh i have to like try and get this thing back down to a normal view level right okay so because what jared's doing is whereas what stern and zen do if you want to reposition the table and where you're standing in relation to the table you push the x button and mm. it snaps the camera to you Zachariah didn't do that. There is no way of snapping the camera to you. They have no. instead what Jared was doing there, which was a room scale slider. Yeah. And it's a slider that is at preset positions. So it'll go, chick, 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 you know, depending on how you are. So in my case, where I have the sensor is exceedingly important. Because if I don't have that sensor exactly lined up at eye height, it sent me up to the roof, like what I was asking you to remember where I was playing. And then yep. I had to go into the room scale thing and try and bring it back down to where I should be standing. Um, and I could not get it to be a comfortable position unless, again, I threw that sensor right in front of my face. Um, I reckon they must have had... Annoying. They must have had it set up like that when they were sitting at the VR experience in in the studio. Um, Magic Pixel must have had everything set up the way that they could in the studio, and then that was the default. So it's almost like they need to throw in instructions saying, right, so your sensors need to be one point five meters off the ground, <laughs> and they need to be positioned at forty five degree angles from each other. And if you do that, you'll have a great time in VR. Otherwise, we'll get wrecked because right. it's going to be everything's out because that's not how we set it up. Now, before you think, okay, so, you know, Zachary had a problem with that. Farsight, <laughs> similar. If yeah. cause When I first started, I had my sensor set off about 30 degrees off in front of me. When I go into the Stern VR app, guess where my table is? 30 degrees over. <laughs> Could I reposition? No, I could not. The most I could do is reposition the table a little bit, but I could not swing it all the way around at all. So I'm like, okay, fine. So again, I put the sensor directly in front of me. Well, then it was every single time, and I'm talking every single time I loaded in a table, the height was wrong. Even though I programmed how tall I am, Oculus should be doing the math on this. Yep. Um, so even though I programmed how tall I am, it still had me being short. So how do I do that? So now I have to squat and shift over because it also was always off center, shift over, hit the X button, and that would center the table to more or less where I wanted it to be. But mm. because of, and Jared's is different than my experience on this, it would snap to positions. Yes. And so it would snap into a position and I was fighting back and forth until eventually I just went fine and I lifted up my controller and plopped it where I should be. Because the right. beautiful thing with VR is I could actually make it so that the play field felt and looked like it was at the exact same height as where my hands were actually sitting on my pin cab. Mm. And so through the bottom of the headset, you can actually see a little bit of daylight, the real world. And sometimes I'd kind of look down and I could see my hand superimposed basically over where the VR play field was, and it was perfect. That's you know, yeah, where right. it should be. And so mm -hmm. once you if you if once you get it dialed in, it's like, ooh, that's magic. But every single time on I loaded Stern in VR. on Stern VR, I had to, basically, I was very aware of the fact that I'm in VR and I'm playing a program and I had to monkey around in order to get this thing to, to do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And that's just very disappointing because... It really is. Guess what? When I loaded in Zen, it just worked. 
It was. Mm. It didn't matter where I had the sensor. I could have the sensor low. I could have the sensor high. I could have the sensor off to the side. Boom! It always put the table smack dab right in front of me, and I would at most have to do a slight shift and realign, and that would be it. And then it would remember that position so that every other table that I loaded in would load in that put same it, position. Yep, exactly where yeah. I wanted it to be. So, and these little things, these oh. are the things that make a VR experience believable. Believable and, and more enjoyable to stay in for a yeah, longer period like of time. You want to be in there for longer. I, I, I was in when I was like playing some of the other games like um, Zacharia and um, Stern. I wanted out after an hour. Like it was just a little bit, it just felt a little bit hard. Right. But in uh, FX2, I played it until my headset told me I needed to plug it back into power. Yeah. Like, and I went, oh, so it's been two and a bit hours. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even realize. And, you know, it's, it's because it is just, it's very different to the other two apps yeah. in the way it immerses you and brings you in. All right. Let's look real quickly at what the menu. Oh, hold on. I'm going to show. So when you, there's a little bit of animation that happens in the Stern VR app when you select mm. your table. And of course, as soon as I select over to here, it disappears. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if this, I have the animation cut at this particular moment. It's very close. Yeah. 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 So you go ahead and you select your table and then all of a sudden these mechanical arms come down out of the roof and it pulls it up. And it takes the legs off, the back book goes off, it sucks it back in the ceiling. Right, it and brings down the new table with the, you know, changes the art panel. in the room. And you're like, hey, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty awesome. Hey, that's great. Except for the fact that it does that every single time you pick the table. And every you can't It doesn't it. matter if you already had that table that you played. If you went out to the main menu and then you decided to go play that table again, it will play that same animation again it's like it's part of the boot up process it does that while the table is yeah. loading or something all it, right it, it's <laughs> it, it really it looks cool for the first two times then you go i wish there was a skip button here is what the menu on that you're greeted with <laughs> uh, for i'm gonna pause it right there uh that you're greeted with for stern vr so yeah, you've got your high scores on the one side. You've got your table goals on the left side. You've got your options and extras and, you know, all these menus that you're greeted with. Again, you're never allowed to just melt into the VR experience. It no. always pummels you with the fact that you are in a game and in a fake environment. Um, and it, it, it shifts you out of that reality. So that's kind of... A bit, yeah. That's in both <laughs> Zachariah and in Stern VR. Like you're, you're very aware that you're playing a game. Yeah, you're not really playing what they, you know, like they like call an experience. Yeah, uh, in VR. <laughs> okay, so let's look at uh, some other things with regards to these tables. Um, the cool thing is, once you're standing there in front of the table. You can look to the side, you can see the whole cabinet art. You can, mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Stern and uh, Zen, you can get really close to the play field. Um, you can walk around to the side of the cabinet, look back at where the ball would drain, really low to the, to the play field. It allows you to do that. Zachariah, mm -hmm. every single time I tried to get close to the table, it would jump away. It would never let me like get right up on top of it. Yeah, it's a different experience for me, as you'll see. Okay, um, okay, so here we go. Oh, this is just, I wanted to just show this real quick. In Zen, they actually bothered to model the bottom of the play field. Yeah. If you so did that, if, yeah, if you did that exact same thing with Stern, you're going to see the underside of the full video play field. It's, yeah, it's basically the flip of, of the play field. There's no bottom. No bottom. At all. No bottom. Completely fake. And you think you see it on one of the tables when it gets sucked up into the room. I think it's Mustang, actually. It gets sucked up, and you can see the Corvette model just <laughs> in, in the mid-center of the table, just there. It's shortcuts. What can you say? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we don't need any polygons there. No, no. Not. <laughs> all right, let me see what else I uh, put here. 
Oh, okay. So now. Here I go. Here, Jared's going to show some clipping here. Woo, getting a little too close. Now, I'm going to pause that right there. Hold on, let me pause it with a brightly lit. There we go. So, I'm going to pause that there just to say, although there is clipping, and although that uh, if you tried to get too close to the table, it would do that to you, I do want you guys to look at those inserts. Those inserts mm. are beautiful. They actually modeled, it seems, <laughs> the plastics yep. and the light that would shine through the plastics. Why am I saying that? I don't have the uh, illustration of it, but the reason why I'm pointing that out, on Stern VR, it all just looks like stickers. It's just flat. It's flat. There's no definition. And there's a, it's basically a sticker that is not lit and a sticker that is lit. And mm. that's they, the they've difference. They've changed the lighting. They've just flipped yep. the pattern yep. on the sticker. And where it's really obvious, uh, again, like I said, I was able to get right up there to the table and, and look around at everything. The, on the sterns, a lot of them have this big old plastic flasher. Right? Yeah. It's a cylinder. Big you, barrel flasher. You yeah. get up, you look at that thing, it's nothing but a texture graphic. That's it. It's it, not round. No, it's this flat image. But I mean, but a, I mean, there's no, there's plate. no ridges. There's no ridges in it. Um, there's no, none of those cuts that would be in the actual plastic. It's just a cylinder with a graphic sticker on it. Yeah, and that is the way it. it is on everything. Yeah. All your insert lights are nothing but sticker play field. It, it, brings you out of it really quickly, um, especially when comparing to Zacharia and what they did. Now, yeah. trying to compare that with what Zen did, well, unfortunately, because none of the Williams tables are available on VR, Zen never really does this kind of insert. No, they don't do star inserts in no. the game. So at least at least not in the very early ones. They right. may have started doing it in things like aliens, etc. But Yeah. So it's really difficult to tell uh how they modeled theirs. But again, if you get look close, it does appear that light it doesn't look like just a play a flat sticker that alternates. It does no, the appear lens light does is... actually look like it's yeah. it's got like a hot spot in it and it's got like, you know, a clear diffraction of light going through it. Yeah. Um but I just don't think they've they've gone and molded the um, the the actual facets in the the lenses. And I mean, you may be saying to yourself, "Who cares? Nobody yeah. plays <laughs> pinball with their head up against a playfield." But I would argue, how many times have you gone up to a real machine and hovered over the glass and had a yeah. really close look at what all the inserts say, so that you know mm -hmm. what to shoot? All this the time. is giving you that opportunity to be able to do that. And unfortunately, as soon as you do that, you realize how many shortcuts were taken by Farsight. Yeah. And it's quite awful. In the case of Zachariah, it's just they didn't model their clipping. Um, like I said, Jared's able to do what I'm not able to do on mine. On mine, if I get that close, the play field jumps away. I can't go through yeah. it. So, Yeah. Uh, let me continue on with this. Not sure what else I wanted to show here. It's Other just showing how how crisp all the textures are on it. Like, yeah, I everything mean, it is, is really cool to really be able to hard. see all the habit rails, um, you know, standing up in the air, basically. Off oh, we there's go. that video. <laughs> there's there's, there's <laughs> that menu. I'm waving around that menu with <laughs> with uh, with little <laughs> little cares. Yep. <laughs> um, you can actually hide that menu for the record too. You press like the Y button on the left controller oh, okay. and it just disappears the menu. So it's not waving around in your face all the time because if you don't, it'll clip through the play field as you're playing it okay. um, depending on your hand position. So, yeah. All right. You, so what do we say? Yeah. What do we, why don't we get into a little bit of gameplay video then? Mm. Let's, I think that's what I have lined up next. Yep. So here's Jared playing a little bit of Mars. Yep. So this is Oculus Quest 2 yeah. um, footage. Um, I did, for the record, record the PC version, uh, which we'll see in a bit. Yep. Um, but it's uh, like a lot. It was hard to get good quality frame rate on. Yeah. Uh, as you see, look at look at that menu <laughs> through there. It's great. No, I told Jared to check out Robot because honestly, in 3D. This it's table incredible. is... I don't understand how you would play it in 2D. Because it's got three different levels on it. Yeah. Um, so, th this is what... It, well, essentially, what you're seeing now is what it looks like in 2D. Yeah. In 3D, 
it has just got such definition between those three play fields. And with the virtue of VR, you can actually get in there and look at the different levels and get down low and see where all the entries and exits are. Yeah. And it just makes a huge difference to comprehension on some of these really detailed tables. Like it's night and day compared to the 2D experience. So let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit. Um, mm. I, I can show you I can I can show you the stern. It basically looks the same as all these. All of these in 3D are pretty awesome. There's no they, they are great. Yeah, yep. it is a night and day difference um, in terms of you being able to spatially understand what the actual layout is. I, I mean. The worst of your experience with these is still going to be you going, ooh, compared to if you were just used to playing, again, on your TV. Um, yeah. There's there's absolutely no doubt about that. So how do I compare it, though, when I play these in 3D on my TV? Mm. Well, for Zen, I basically found that if I went into View 5... That's about as close of approximation as I could make it to what it felt like playing in VR, um, and that was with me playing in 3D, because um, okay. it gave me a, a a good perspective. Wide, it didn't have a terribly large amount of movement, and what I was noticing with me playing in 3D was I was doing a lot of head movement, as opposed to when I'm playing in t 2D and it's just my eyes that are doing the movement. Yeah. So it did a fair approximation of that, um, but. The ability to lean in is the difference between the two. So points to the 3D version of Zen 2 in terms of graphical fidelity and not having a screen door and being absolutely super duper crisp. Yeah. More points though for the VR experience because it just you're not it fooled. Natural. I mean, or you, excuse me, yeah. you are fooled. You immediately just you feel, and the second you try doing a walk around of the cabinet, that's when you really truly feel fooled because you go to like if you're leaning low you actually put your hand up to put your hand on the cabinet and just goes through nothing it falls through. <laughs> yeah. oh that's right this, this isn't yes. real but it's pretty real <laughs> which is why yeah. having the pin sim is vital because what i would do is i would leave one hand on that and then start to do my cabinet walk so i always had a sense of where i was um, yeah. without falling over <laughs> the right. the other thing to note is that Farsight took even more shortcuts in that than they did with Stern VR. And when I say shortcuts, painful shortcuts. The mm -hmm. 3D for Zen, you turn it in 3D, you put on your glasses, you go, yeah, I'm playing in 3D. You do the same thing with Pinball Arcade in 3D, and everything's still blurry. And you literally have to do that magic eye deep focus in order oh, to... You have to like, like Oh wow! They you put have to, their like, they the put their convergence blur. too far away. It was so far away that you still have to cross your eyes a little bit in order to get it to go. Once you've got your eyes doing the deep focus, you're fine. But it's that extra little bit of eye strain right off the bat. The other thing that they did, which is I don't even know why. So they float the DMD, and both of the, them do this. They float the DMD towards the front, which is mm. stupid to me. Put it towards the back. But they float towards the front. But Farsight only put it in one eye. So it's not even 3D. So if I close my right eye, I can still see the menu or the DMD. If I close my left eye, DMD is gone. <laughs> so it's not even in 3D. It's just there. And there was various menu items throughout the program that were that way. It's like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> That's just That's absurd. Bad really bad um the other thing that i would point out is that with stern vr jared made mention earlier about textures and mm. whether it's the software or the hardware that's causing you to not be able to get them in focus uh in stern vr they use a lot of low-res textures folks they really did. And wow. the farther you get to the back of the play field, the more low res textures that they used. Yep. So if you're looking at the ACDC table with the jukebox names on the back, 
they will not come into focus. <laughs> when you zoom, when you lean in, they yeah. will be blurred. Because so. they didn't use high res. You look at the apron card; it's a blurry mess. Um, mm. You know, for your I, there's a lot of that. Um, when you take a walk around and you start looking at things from the backside, they're not fully modeled. Um, mm. To the point that if you look down the ball drain, you just see space. It's black. And it's just a black pit. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Zen actually you modeled do. what goes on in there. Yeah, there's actually like a, a, a trough yeah. that the balls fall into. And you can actually watch them fall in there as well. Another it's, area uh, that and there. both Zen and Zacharia did this, the back boxes, they modeled three-dimensionally. Mm. Farside didn't bother doing that. On and their old tables. I no. checked out On a the couple. Ones? There was the only one that I saw that was actually 3D, and you can correct me, but uh, the only one that I saw was Starship Troopers. It actually had the curve, and there was some dimensionality to it. But I checked out Mustang and Star Trek and uh, Frankenstein and what else? To, oh, Ripley's. All of them completely flat, like it's a poster. Again, like see, a I giant never, sticker. I didn't walk around the cabinet. Okay. Um, so I didn't see it, but on the from the front, it looks like they're three D modeled. Like they have, looks like they have dimension to them. Now compare that to, like I said, Zachariah actually put some dimension to their back box. Not a lot, but some. I was looking at Castle Storm with uh, in Zen, and I looked at the speaker. And not only is the speaker grill 3D, but you can see depth into it to the actual speaker. Well, wow. okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, Again, that's some three-dimensional modeling going on right there. That's some extra detail that yes. they didn't need to do, but they did it because you can do it and you should. And again, I think this all comes down to when people ask, well, how come there's so few tables in Zen VR? And I think this is where you're starting to get into the reasons why. Because they are not just slapping them up there and saying, yeah, great, go, have fun. They're modeling the entire thing. They're very aware of the VR experience. And like we keep on saying, the better the VR that you're experiencing in the room, the longer that you're willing to stay in there because your body is not constant. Your brain is not Fuck constantly it. fighting it. Yeah. Mm. Um, whereas with these other two, your brain is fighting it a lot. And it's yeah. not comfortable, you know, being in there. Um, all right, well, let me show one other th video that we have here. And Jared, you're going to have to talk us through this. Yeah, okay. So um, before we start this, I'll caveat this. The only way I was able to record oops. PC gameplay was to use Camtasia to record a screencast of my screen. So that means that any of the PC-based footage you're seeing in this sizzle reel that Chris is about to play is at around less than 30 frames a second. So mm. don't base what you see in this video about the in-app experience of FX2. It is definitely not this janky. It is This is purely just illustrative purposes to show the difference between the Quest 2 build and the Oculus desktop PC build and the differences in graphics fidelity on the two and yeah. visual effects. That's what this is for. Okay. So let's start it up and have a little So look. this first thing I think Jared wanted to show the difference between the solar flares that happen. Yeah. So that's the PC on the left and that's Quest on the right. Now, again, remember that uh, it's pretty lossy, the video, but you get a little bit of extra sharpness. Now, if you go back down here and just pause it for a minute. Okay. Um, what I was showing here, just go back like another like 10 seconds or so. It's it's hard to see um, in the video, but on the left-hand side, the rings that light up, you get a little bit of light casting onto oh, okay. the, the apron, whereas okay. on the Quest version, the Quest 2 version on the right, you don't get any of that light casting from the rings. So it's it's a graphical sacrifice they've made from the PC version with you know a really big video card. I'm running an RTX card in my gaming laptop that's powering this. So of course you're going to see differences in in effects based okay. on the hardware you're running. All right, let's see. So see how there's like a, a sort of oh, like a, I see what you're saying. 
how yeah, they light like up. Yeah, there's a shadow effect. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a, like a stage shadow effect there. Okay. So, and you also see that the, the lights, it's a bit hard to see on the left hand um, on the PC view, but the, the lights um, on the play field actually have like a, a holographic effect above them. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the Quest 2 hardware, you lose that holographic effect, except for when you're in some of the modes where the spider is shining um, a scanner on the Mars symbols, you oh, okay. get the holographic effect then on, on the right view, which is a Quest view. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a side-by-side -side shot to try and get the center up kicker. And then the nose on the left... Um, the the time was just off on that one with the effects. So the when it shoots in the up kicker, you might just want to back it back frame by frame a little bit until it actually just goes before it's about to up kick. Um, there you go. So see where the bloom is in the um, a little bit more um, back. back. Yeah, just so you can see it when it just fires the 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 actual bloom effect in the in the up kicker um, at the back of the table. There, I don't know if you can get it to that point, but there's a um, point where it just launches the ball and on the left hand side in the PC build you get this really nice light casting effect from the uh, eruption of the ball up through that up kicker whereas on the right hand side you don't really get that effect so much All on right, the so I'm gonna, let's look at that up kicker which is right up here folks yeah so just keep your eye kick. on that on the left yeah. hand side and the right hand side So setting up the shot, it's going to kick it up there, put it down the, the lane, and then I'm going to shoot it up and watch the up kicker. You get a nice oh, boom of light. Oh, I see you see? Yeah. yeah. So there's definitely uh, a loss in some of these effects from PC to Quest 2. So the Quest 2, again, it's running an Android-based system. It's running a Snapdragon XR2 chip in it, which is a VR chip that Snapdragon produce. Um, so you're running essentially an Android build of fx2 but here's the great thing like i've just shown you there oculus allows you to uh, for some games who have cross by experience turned on like fx2 if you have a gaming pc which is oculus compatible and a sync cable for the oculus quest 2 you plug it into your um, laptop or gaming pc and you can play the pc experience for free um and like have the best of both worlds so if you want all the the shininess that you get in the pc build you can get that for free or if you just want the 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 carefree experience of not having wires tethered to your device and not having to fire up your pc and you just want to play well you use a mobile build and you just get straight into gameplay like the the smoothness of the ball and the gameplay itself like the actual physics the the the, the way the game feels doesn't change. It's just a little graphical downstep, and that's it. So the the essence of the game between PC and Quest 2 isn't lost mm -hmm. from that perspective. And that's, that's really nice, the way they've done that. Um, the other two games are not available on Quest 2, um, so you have to play those through PC. There's no other option. So let's talk a little bit then about uh, kind of your pros and cons of... Uh, and and you know <laughs> how you want to work that so let's put it to you this way mm. best vr experience hands down goes to zen i don't think you would disagree with that at all either would you jared absolutely zen yeah. is the, it's just the winner on so many levels they have put such a, a huge amount of effort into the lobby experience just the ease of just starting the game and playing yeah. like you're in you're in a game in 10 seconds. Like I said, it just worked. It really uh, immediately tucked. it lined up with my controller. I was playing. It just worked. Downside, very limited amount of tables. <laughs> yeah, and they're old builds. The most recent oh, builds yeah, definitely are, are universal builds. tables. Yeah. Like you've got... The, the most recent ones are like you've got Jaws, Back to the Future. Um, and uh, what's the other one in that collection? It's another one. E.T. E.T., yeah. That's that's why I forgot about it, because I don't really like the table. Yeah. So, and you got Walking Dead as well. Um, Which Walking Dead, hands down, has the coolest 
So all of these, effects. yeah, environmental effects. So all of these shables yeah. have environmental effects. Walking Dead has a zombie kind of roaming around on your right hand side, and when you ball out, he comes up to the side of the table and leans his body over the entire playfield, and it's just a really cool 3D effect. Um, number two would be Jaws. I was playing that, and I'm like, how come there's not a shark? You know, because there's like water surrounding you. It's like, where's mm. the shark? And I balled out, and I looked down at my right ankle, and there was Jaws popping out of the <laughs> of the water, chomping on the dock, and it kind of gave me a startle out because I just was not expecting it to be there. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, it's really it's really cool. The environmental effects in those in these later tables, you can see how their their chops with VR has evolved. Yeah, because um, it would have been like the first the core pack would have been you know just the you know, it was Secrets Bio of the Deep. Or, or Secrets of the Deep. Um, Epic Quest and Mars. Paranormal. And then the second oh, yeah. pack was Paranormal, Biolab, and uh, I'm forgetting what the other one was. Ah, uh, yeah, it'll, me too. It'll come to me. Um, and then you've got, yeah, yeah you've got uh, the Universal pack. So Back to the Future, E.T., Jaws. As well as uh, you've got the uh, I never what they know what they call it, but it's basically Castle Storm and the Wild West. Uh, yeah, the pinball. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those they're all they look fantastic. They play fantastic. It's easy to get into, but yeah, like I said, limited amount of tables. It's not the ninety six tables you get in FX three. Put it that way. <laughs> right, right. And the other yeah. thing is that because you only have three pinball tables in the room. If you want to change those out, you got to look back at the TV screen, and then you got to go into the menu and select what tables are going to be preloaded into the room, lock those in, and then you're back into that. And I wish that instead, because if you look around the room, there's all sorts of doors, and I wish that mm. those doors had been another three set of tables. So all you would have to do is look at the door, go, I'm on in there, and whoosh, and you could almost there? like have the rooms as pack rooms, and they could theme them in that way as well. Yeah. Um, if this was FX3, kind of cool. it would really be that way. Each room to. would basically be your column that you're used yeah, to in it, FX3. It would be. Now, the interesting thing about how you say you you've, you switch between tables yes. is on the on the Quest 2 is when you're in that main room, what you can do is look at a table and use the trigger button, your your, your um, um, middle, your root finger, uh -huh. and and you can flick between the tables and select what three tables you want to have. Oh, that is much positions. nicer. You just go flick, 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 and you can get your top three hot tables in okay. there. So you're See, always at least they thought there. of... Okay, so again, mm -hmm. software has changed with them putting it on the Quest 2. Um, there yeah. has been adjustments compared to me playing on the Rift. So, um, okay, well, that's good to know that at least they've addressed that a little bit. I still would think it would be cool to have just the rooms, but I think it's like that on the on the Rift as well. It says you don't have the um, the handsets. That's connected. true. If you had if you had those connected, you could flip between them as well. All right, well, I'll have to get back to you guys if I connect those up at some point, which I'm not going to. Which you probably uh, <laughs> won't. Yeah. Now, <laughs> compare that to <clears throat> Zacharia where literally every table is available in VR. Yeah. Every one. And here's how stupid the pricing is. If you already own all the tables, I picked up the entire VR package for $3. It's three bucks. Three bucks. It is, that's it. It says $14.99 like... for the VR, but then it figures out what you already own, and it charged me $3. So I'm sorry, for $3 to get that many Zacharia tables in 3D, the entire collection, we're talking over 110 tables, if you own them all, damn. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. From, from a cost of entry perspective, like, it is unbeatable. <laughs> you, you I mean, you've got content argue. for days. You're going to. Yeah. You, I'm sure that you'll figure out exactly where to put the sensor. You'll muck through all those issues that I was talking about, and then yeah. have a wonderful time playing ample amounts of pinball. <laughs> like all those things that I've said about the Zacharia VR experience with the menu being weird and stuff like that. Like you get used to it. Like it's not. It's not game breaking stuff it yeah. is a bit weird 
And like, if you are doing a like for like comparison, it's not as good. But for three bucks, like they've done an amazing job. The thing I like about it, like it's almost like they've when they've been modeling the room that you're in. Um, if you if you're in the room and you look to the left, oh yeah, there's some cabinets and oh. stuff. Look to the right, there's like couch. But if you look around to the back, it's literally a warehouse that they've set up this set in. I was and like, there's it's a, a direct set. stairs. <laughs> It is just, it is like they've gone, yeah, you know what? We're not, we, it's VR, but guess what? We're not making a complete broom out of this. You know You're what's, you know what's like funny a... about that, Jared? Is for people that have, uh, with Pinball Arcade, for people that were doing the cabinet mod, they were able yeah. to manipulate and look anywhere in the room in order to be able to do that. Farsight did the exact same thing. It's oh, hilarious. really? Yep, it's a three wall. It's a three wall set, and there is no roof. And you can even see that sometimes in reflection, you can see like the lighting that would have been above. Um, yeah. Yep. So I mean, it's not exactly uncommon. I don't think. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's like, it, it's. It just shows to me that the the Magic Pixel dudes have a bit of a sense of humor because <laughs> they're going, you know, let's let's not, you know go nuts here all you care about is the pinball that's what you're here for yeah let's make it look like you're in a like a, a nice room and you can change the environments and everything they give you a heap of options you can mess around with in in there as well which is kind but, of magic pixels thing yeah an overload of options <laughs> yeah um, and this is the thing like if they could just give you some really nice presets in the game you'd be able to get in there and have a very similar experience to to zen's offering and like you can get in there I just want to start a game, get in there. It knows what your position is. Like if they just made, like, again, I'm not expecting this at all for three bucks, but if they if they got in there and just made some tweaks, uh, it would be a comparable experience to Zen um, if they got it right. Like, because the, the work that they've done on the tables, it clearly shows. Well, it would simply of... come down to, again, pushing the X button to reset where you are following Zen's model, which is no matter what direction my headset is facing, no, it doesn't matter where the sensor is, that it centers up to that rather mm -hmm. than me having to center myself to the, the sensor itself. Um, That's right. And then unfortunately, you know, I have a problem in general with Zachary's menus, even in the, you know, just the standard app. And these are the mm -hmm. exact same menus that all the problems that I have with their menus there, um, just such as when I push a back button, don't ask me, are you sure? And then highlight the no so that I have to do an extra button push to go yes. Um, yeah. That's in, it's the exact same menu system. So there are definite yeah. tweaks that they should do. They should be looked, they should have looked at this in VR themselves because it feels like they never put a headset on. Otherwise mm, they would have like thought, ow! Or <laughs> well, maybe, or maybe they would have thought, oh, this is cool. Everything's like really, like you don't know what this, what's going through right. their minds when they're making this thing. Like they, they surely would have tested it. They would have had to. Sure, I'm sure. Um, test it. So I think it's just their perception of what they think is, is cool versus perhaps what other people think is cool. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, $14.99 yeah. if you don't own, if you don't own a lot of Zen tables, it's probably going to still be $14.99. They give you some Zachary, tables. Yeah. They give you they a package would. of tables so that you can be playing in VR. And then as you buy tables, um, you know, they'll be in, available in VR. But if you already yeah. owned all the VR or all the Zacharia tables, three bucks. Um, so this is this whole like prorated system is actually a good thing to remember with Steam in general is that if someone is offering a bundle discount, um, like for example, Zen offers you a bundle discount on packs and you're between Steam sales or whatever and you just want to buy tables. This, uh, Steam is clever enough to work out what you do and don't own and you'll still get the discount applied to anything that you don't have in that bundle. So you get the best of both worlds if you're doing these bundle buys. Yep. I didn't realize that until I'd experienced how the pro rating system works with VR. I'm sure this is not news to everyone else on Steam. I'm probably a, a curmudgeon here and very late to this <laughs> information, but it really surprised me that you can get really good value by buying a bundle and don't be scared about having all the, the games in there because it will just work it out for you. Yeah, It's really, really neat. And then if we look at Stern VR, uh, pro on that, it's free. That's a huge uh, Yeah, the price of entry is, you can't argue with that. 
Right. And um, um yeah. and on top of that, you're going to be getting to the ability to play things like Ghostbusters, ACDC, uh, Star Trek. Uh, oh, ACDC, know. unfortunately, <laughs> unless you own it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying that. It, oh yeah, that's right. Unless you own ACDC. If you if you bought them before they um, lost the rights to sell it, yes, you can play it. But the frustrating thing at the moment is, and this is one of the major gripes in the reviews, is like, so you show me that ACDC is available in the menu, yet when I click on the item to actually access it, I, it says this item is no longer available. It's like, well, if it's not there, remove it for people oh, who can't have it. Right. You know, but the I thing is, it's really hard playing it. That. <laughs> yeah, I because well, they have three versions in there. They have mm -hmm. the regular version. They have back in black, and they have Lucy. I think. Yeah. Um. So, like, I, of course, you want to play Lucy because it's the best version. Um. And um. Yeah, I couldn't get access to it. So it's like three games out of the I uh, twelve. Uh, yeah, twelve. So it's like pretty much a quarter of the collection you can't play. Um, if you're a late adopter to this, which is pretty frustrating. Um, um, the other thing that I've found that even on my really high spec gaming PC, which plays Zen and um, Zachariah without any glitches whatsoever, when I went to play Ghostbusters and Stern VR, it was jittery as heck. Um, in multi ball, it was like, like janky as. Uh, and I remember that when this thing was ported to mobile, they had all sorts of performance issues with it. And I think those performance issues have flowed into the PC version as well, uh, or at least the VR version. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Mm. Um, so like you said, free. Beyond that, the app fights me constantly. I have even bothered placing the sensor directly in front of me and it's still not lining up with me so that I have to physically pick up my controller to get lined up. it uh, If I try turning on Rumble on my controller, it crashes the entire app. There is a yep. uh, earn tokens thing, challenge. Mm. Um, you get three tries on each table in order to beat it, and if you don't, then you're supposed to reset the challenge. Every time I reset the challenge, it crashes the app. Yeah, it and does I crash can't reset, I can't. Sure. I can't play that mode anymore. It like literally it's can't play it. It's broken. You get um, one shot. Yeah. That's it. Um, no, I actually went in there and um, like side story to that, I went in and reported that in the Discord chat for Farsight. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I've logged in because I wanted to get on the FX3 uh, Discord. And I thought, oh, this is still in my profile. Uh, I'll have a look in there. There was some updates there from Rob, who goes by the name of Flippy Floppy. So I thought, oh, what the heck? I'll I'll, I'll speak and yell into the void and put a message up there. <laughs> And it flippy floppy responded saying, "Oh yeah, I think um, I reported that their challenge modes don't reset. You know, is it even is it ridiculous of me to ask that we fix that up as a like pretty bad bug that crashes the app?" He says, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go into the app pretty soon and do some updates on it." Quote unquote was what we got from flippy floppy. Now, don't count what, on it. <laughs> no, no, but this is the concern I have. Where in the Stern license position are they with Ghostbusters, Star Trek, and Mustang? What would those updates potentially be? <laughs> would it be taking those out of the game if you don't own them? I hope not. Wow. Because there's not much motivation to go into that app apart from those. Yeah. Um, because one uh, of the other tables that they have, folks, is Last Action Hero. And it does not play well. It's like play slow and oh, it's floaty as anything it's horrible it's very floaty and it has incredibly terrible sound like and jared pointed out one thing and i completely forgotten about it well they had to get rid of the acdc song that plays during the entire game yeah so they replaced that but all the audio is muddled and i was like why is it muddled and jared pointed out well it's still in mono and that is the thing with the stern app everything is still mono yeah it's not in stereo all your mechanical effects of the table are mono. All the audio, mono. You listen to both Zachariah and Zen, all your mechanical effects are stereo. A stereophonic, it yeah. It brings you into the environment. So, yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't want to, you know, 
piss all over <laughs> Farsight's parade here, but it's a pretty terrible app. Um, it's it's good that it's free, and yep. as much as I I like the the games that the 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 new games, so Ghostbusters, Star Trek in particular, um, and Mustang, they they all translate really nice in 3D. I think Star Trek by far and is the winner. Um, the other neat thing with the Stern app, and this is, I think, the only app you can do this easily with, is you can turn down the room brightness and play in the dark. Oh, yes. The ambient room is pretty pretty nice touch. Yes. It's very nice touch. Like, it, I played, like, uh, yeah, both... Um, uh, Ghostbusters and Star Trek with the with the lights turned down. You can't turn them off. You can turn them down, and it's it's really nice. Like it's they've done a real nice job with the lighting, and I have to give them a tick for that. Um, but yeah, the it's, there's a lot of rough edges in that app. It is showing its age. Yeah. So now something yeah. all three need to deal with, less so on Zachariah, but definitely with Stern and with uh, Zen. Their back boxes are ginormous. Um, and, mm. and when I say that, it's there's something wrong with the sense of scale. Because when you stand at a regular pinball machine, I'm 5'10", I stand at the machine, and I look across at the back box, the back box is just, basically, it's the same height as me, right? Mm. In these, it's like, I gotta look up. <laughs> they're they're like a monolith. They're like yeah. six to ten inches higher than they should be, and then they seem even wider. I'm sure that they're modeled like correctly, scaled. Mm. You know, with you know they put in the dimensions, but something's not translating correctly. Something else that doesn't translate correctly. All of them, their play fields, either seem perfectly flat or that they're sloping down. There's uh, a weird thing about the rake of the play field that doesn't translate properly in VR, and this is across all three of them that this is a this is a factor. And I don't know what I don't know what that is. I mean, if it's a, a sensor thing or whatever, but basically your sense of scale, the back of the the machine should look like it's almost raised up higher. I don't know. It it that was the thing that shocked me the most as soon as I loaded because I loaded in Zen first. And the very first table I loaded in was um, uh, Castle Storm, and I just went. Mm. I, I, I went. Why is this playfield just flat? It just looked odd. I was like, "There's no rake at all," and it should be that way. So it's really weird. I, I'm trying to think. Is like in those videos that um, I took and that we showed in the show. I, I, th I don't. Remember the videos experiencing that. The, the videos translate differently than the 3D, I feel. And again, this is me comparing it's, also, mm. comparing it to me playing on in 3D on my TV. Because on my mm. TV, I got that sense of rake. In VR, I didn't. So maybe again, maybe it's the, the, the Rift compared to the Quest 2. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's weird. I think it feels... It, I didn't get that sense so much when I was playing. I thought, oh yeah, this feels just normal. And uh, like the the actual like rake of the table felt right to mm -hmm. me. I, like it didn't stand out. It didn't stand out at me like you're describing, mm -hmm. at least. So I have to think that like it must be a hardware or camera. It could be. It's probably it, it, it could it's be probably a sensor position issue. I'd say. Unfortunately, which is again I another be finding out anytime soon unless Oculus goes. Hey, here's a request to you. Um, but I, I I can't go down to I can't exactly you know walk into Best Buy right now. And be like, hey, let me see that quest too. And hey, can we load up <laughs> the Zen no, FX too? That's yes, a bit hard. Yeah, that's a little bit difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, it is rather hard. <laughs> um, all that being said, I completely understand why a lot of you swear by pinball and VR. Mm. Me standing, me too. Me standing with my controller in that 3D space, it's very easy to get lost. I still am not a fan, though, of... And I know with the Quest 2, they've solved this a little bit. For me, once I put that headset on, the world is... Isolated. It's isolated. It's completely mm -hmm. isolated. The Quest 2, what do you do? You tap it somehow and it'll activate cameras? Yeah, so what with the Quest 2, they've done this thing called um, pass-through. And you have to turn it on um, in the app. But what you do is you, you go basically go tap the side of the headset and it 
basically pauses the game and switches on all of the uh, room cameras. So you can actually see around you in the environment. So if you hear someone coming in the room, double tap, you instantly out of the game and into the real world again. And when you want to go back in, double tap again, and you're back into the game experience again. And then, of course, having you know having headphones or the earpieces of the of the Rift Two, uh, right there, you're wearing headphones, folks. So your vision <clears> is gone, your hearing is gone. You're isolated in this world. And uh, if you have a teenage son who likes to play pranks on you, as I was playing, all of a sudden he came up and he just put his hand on my hand. I freaked out because oh. that was not <laughs> in the video. <laughs> <laughs> and he Good laughed on, he thought that was the best <laughs> i bet he did so yeah yeah that's that's my only thing that i don't like about that aspect of things so for me what is the most immersive i don't entirely know i mm. i still think that i would prefer the real world machine in front of me a VR cab in front of me. Mm. Um, ideally, I mean, let's let's face it. What would be incredibly awesome? Hey, if you could do what Nintendo did with their 3DS and make that entire screen a glasses off 3D, and you did that, that on would a cab. Be oh my god, that would be like the ultimate, right? <laughs> that would be incredible to experience. That, that would be nuts. Um, option two: do what Arcuda did. Put some kind of a a camera up there for for parallax and then based off of how i move change the play field the 2d play field a little bit uh, i experienced it it works really well um it does make it a little bit more immersive and then you're still there in the real world with people that can be watching around you and you're physically playing that for me is the thing until vr gets the resolution of a tv um, I think I'm always going to have that very much aware sense of, yeah, my brain is going, hey, this is cool, but it still is not reality. Yeah, I think um, for me, uh, I would probably lean into the VR side of things for pinball more than um, the PC side, um, particularly with the advances in VR that's happening at the moment. Um, and the Quest 2. There's more things to come this year with just the hardware alone and what they're doing with the Quest 2. They're, like Chris was saying before, I think they're looking at doing a mode that like tries to like reduce the screen draw effect by manipulating pixels a little bit, um, and that's going to make a huge difference. Um, the way that the games are going and just the whole ability to play both PC and like um, Quest 2 builds of the same game through the cross by system opens up a really large world of VR to you. And for me, I think it, VR for me is probably the way I'd prefer to experience pinball moving forward. But you've got to have the titles. That's the thing that's really missing at the moment. Yeah. You've got you've got to have the titles. Like if you think to FX3, there's so many Marvel games mm. that would just look incredible. In I mean, I can 3D. tell you right now, Tesla in 3D is way different than different. playing it in 2D. Um, mm. When I played Plants vs. Zombies, obviously not available now, but when I played that in 3D, it was like, oh, I suddenly understand it. Um, mm. The skill shot in Back to the Future in VR, I suddenly understood what you're actually supposed to do to successfully do that skill shot. I had no clue what to do previously. No, um, me neither. You, you've got to like, it's like... um like a soft plunge it's got to flip up and then just drop down the yeah. rail doesn't it yeah yeah and they, you cannot see that in yeah. the game it's like you don't know what to look for yeah so yeah. i mean that's one of those things where it's like there's a lot to be said about playing these in vr uh helping you understand what they what what is going on with these but yeah the titles just we need the titles um oh, yeah that's all there is it's, to it it's so real content it, you do you do after a while go mm, do, do i want to play paranormal again i mean paranormal <laughs> Oh, that I, is I will say thing. paranormal better is way better in VR than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. it, it is almost even though it's an old game, it really is the the show pony of FX2. Like it's just so well implemented. Like the Nessie ramp, 
Um, oh yeah, at, over the apron, like you can understand the geometry of that. Then and, the fact like, that you, you can just, see um, the blunt back glass the entire time, just like you yeah. would if you were playing Bonsai Run, and yeah. so there's no jarring transition from being lower playfield to all of a sudden being upper playfield. It, it no, no it, it, it's really well done. It's um, so good. Yeah. So, look, let's wrap this up here, folks. Mm. We finally did our VR episode, and it's not going to be the last one. <laughs> no, it's because <laughs> Jared is enjoying pinball and VR way too much. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, be very curious to see what is coming down the pipe. Uh, I think Mel said that we should be hearing sometime in February. Who knows? They're doing their Zen's doing a pinball show starting the 27th. Yeah. I think it's called the pinball show. They say they have a major announcement when they do that. Who knows? Maybe they jump the gun from early February and make a major announcement about VR then. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's something maybe. completely else. We're we're going to be paying attention to that show for sure. But yeah, um, yeah, this won't be the last time because now we have our our setups up, and there's definitely aspects that we've both been enjoying. Uh, again, I've got hardware constraints that Jared's not having constraints on, so that's always mm. going to be a, a a step difference. But I, we felt that it was important to talk about these two different systems because a lot of you still do just have a Rift or a Rift S and uh, we wanted to highlight how there's a difference between uh, these that it's not necessarily a software problem with what you're seeing that a lot of it is just pure hardware and the, the software is ready it's just the hardware isn't I think you know what you need Chris is a Vive Cosmos the, the Vive Cosmos has like 2k screens each eye I think <laughs> And it's, you know, it's one and a half grand. So, you know, get out your pennies. Oh, oh, but okay. if, you, you know. if you want no screen door, that's your option. <laughs> Go and spend your one and a half grand. <laughs> oh. But it's an incredible headset. And it does, uh, like, it's, yeah, it's amazing. But yeah, you pay for it. So hopefully you all have enjoyed us doing nothing but VR this episode. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know what, uh, what else you want to know about this. Um, we'll be yeah. happy to, whatever <laughs> you want us to focus on with regards to this is there something you want to see video that you want captured yeah related I do a to fair any of bit this on the quest too yeah yeah like uh, jared it... can capture it and and we'll show it to you guys we presented what we found interesting ourselves um mm. and but what you the audience want to know we're more than happy to dive in and you know we can put that in an, another episode down the line in the future so please leave a comment here on YouTube, if you want to send us an email, you can do that. We are blah blah blockade at gmail.com. Um, we can answer it that way. You can send it to us via Twitter. Yep. <laughs> there's Jared's Twitter. Hey, there's the show Twitter. You know. So uh, however up. you want to communicate to us, that'd be awesome. Mm. Until next time, though. It was a mm. long one, Jared. We went a long it was we a had long a lot one. to talk about. Yeah, there's a lot to pack into that episode. <laughs> there is. It was a long time due. But our next episode will be our favorite subject, Jared's most of all. Stuff and things. Till next time, folks. Bye-bye. See you later.